Hey, so this isn't one of my main videos or anything that'll be out this weekend. This is just an aside as part of a Tumblr discussion I was having. The question that was raised was how does the strength of gravity uh, vary as you go inside the Earth? It's a common mistake to think that, say for example, you had a tunnel down the axis of rotation of the Earth and you fell down it. How would gravity change as you were falling down that tunnel to the center of the Earth? And it's a common mistake to think that gravity gets stronger as you fall down that tunnel, because we learn, of course, that gravity goes as the inverse square of the distance from the center. But that's only true for point particles. When you have more than one point particle, for example, things change, and especially when you have a large object with a uh, what I'm going to be using as a constant density, uh, that changes as well. So this is just a little mathematical analysis into that. I hope you enjoy. So we're going to start with the vector form of the equation given on Tumblr, which is that the vector form of f equals minus gmm over r squared r hat, where capital M is the mass of the Earth and little m is the mass of the person falling. Now this is like baby's first version of this in vector form, and we could do a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out capital M for an integral over all space of a kind of heaviside step function, kind of, uh, where inside the Earth this density function has the value of the average density of the Earth. I'm not going to make it change. It's just going to be an average density, constant density, inside the Earth. And outside the Earth, it's going to be zero. And I'm also, uh, since that's a, an integral and it has a dummy variable across all space, I'm going to switch out r hat over r squared to be uh, r minus s over mod cubed of r minus s. And if you're wondering why it's cubed, it's because there's an extra factor of mod r minus s on top that took the hats away, where r is the position of the faller and s is a dummy variable over all space that we're going to be using. So we have this second equation here, f equals minus gm uh, volume integral rho of s, which is a scalar, r minus s over mod cubed r minus s integrated over all space. And uh, that's Newton's law of gravitation in a in slightly better form. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play around with this because I want to get to Gauss's law. So I'm going to take the divergence of f, and this gives us the divergence of f, which is going to be a scalar, so we're using scalars now, not vectors, equals minus gm integral rho of s, the divergence of that thing integrated over all space. Now the divergence of that thing, if you know your vector calculus relationships, is 4 pi times the Dirac delta function of r minus s. So substituting that in, we're left with this fourth equation. The uh, divergence of f equals minus 4 pi gm integral of the density function times the Dirac delta function of r minus s integrated across this dummy space variable. And because of the Dirac delta function, it means that we can now evaluate this integral which leaves us with the divergence of f equals minus 4 pi gm density. Good. This is where I wanted to be. This is Gauss's law for gravitation. Now, uh, what I'm trying to do now is reach a different form of Gauss's law. So I'm going to take a volume integral of this. Uh, the volume integral of the divergence of something is equal to the surface integral, if you know this relationship, of the same thing. So uh, here's the equation here, if you want to know it. And uh, I'm going to substitute that in and get the surface integral of f, dotted with the uh, surface uh, vector there, is equal to minus 4 pi gm, the integral across all space of the density. And the integral across all space of the density is, of course, as we laid out at the beginning, uh, capital M. Don't ask me why I changed my notation. <laughs> I do what I want. Um, so you have the, uh, the integral form of Gauss's law here, which is that the surface integral, so this is an arbitrary surface, so I can just draw this surface, and the integral of the force dotted with the perpendicular surface element at that point, and the integral across the whole surface, is equal to minus 4 pi gmm. So uh, what we'll do is we'll make this surface be a shell on the outside of the Earth, like in space, and we're going to make it a sphere that has its center at the center of the Earth, and has a radius of r. Now I'm going to evaluate this integral. Now of course the force is going to be in line with that dA and it's a sphere, so we've got lots of nice symmetries. So the surface integral there evaluates to f times 4 pi r squared. And uh, that leaves us with f 4 pi r squared equals minus 4 pi g m m. And I divide through by 4 pi r squared and you're left with f equals minus g m m over r squared. 
which is the equation that we had right at the start, just in a scalar form because I uh, made things scalar by taking a divergence. Uh, great, sanity check, perfect. Gauss's law works. Now, that volume integral that I took of the density is only the volume on the interior of the surface that I drew, that sphere. So what would happen, for example, if I drew that surface on the interior of the Earth? So I'm going to draw the surface on the interior of the Earth, and I'm going to make it a sphere inside the Earth, centered on the Earth, of radius r, but r is smaller than the radius of the Earth. What happens now? Well, the first part of the equation works the same. f times 4 times pi times r squared, that's fine. The problem is this capital M changes because the mass of the interior is less than the mass of the entire Earth because some of it's not inside the surface that we draw. So what we get is minus 4 pi gm capital M over the volume of the Earth, which is 4 over 3 pi re cubed. I'm going to use re to mean the radius of the Earth. And multiply that by the volume of this sphere, which is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now the 4 over 3 pi's cancel. And what we're left with is f times 4 pi r squared equals minus 4 pi g m capital M r cubed over r e cubed. Now I'll divide through by 4 pi r squared and we're left with f equals minus g m m r over r 3 cubed. Right? If you can see there, you'll see that the force is proportional to the radius inside the object. Not getting stronger, but in fact getting weaker as the radius decreases. Which is fascinating and very interesting and solves the problem, of course, of some infinity that you reach when you get to the center. So really, the force of gravity is strongest on the surface of the Earth and gets weaker linearly down to the center if you assume constant density. If the density is a bit different, things get a little bit more complicated, uh, you kind of have to know the density function to know what's on the inside of the sphere. But yes, uh, that's a slight slip up that people often make to think that the uh, gravitational force is stronger on the interior of the Earth. It is not. It is weaker than it is on the surface. Thanks.